So um, the integral that we want to do is this. And the region that we're integrating over here is going to look like it's a region bounded between uh, two hyperbolas. All right, so let me draw these hyperbolas. So here's going to be one hyperbola. And this is given by um, x squared minus y squared equals negative 1. And then another hyperbola looks like this, but just sideways. And that's going to be given by x squared minus y squared equals positive 1. And then we're going to find the region that's bounded between these lines here. So I'm going to take the line, this one. This is the line x plus y equals 1. And then we're going to take another line uh, over here, x plus y equals 3. Okay, so the region is in here. Now, this is not an easy integral to set up in the xy coordinates, which is what I've got here. This is x-axis, this is the y-axis. This is not going to be a fun integral to do in this it's going to be difficult to find the antiderivative for one thing in these coordinates. And for another thing, defining the bounds for a region like this is going to be complicated. In the book, they talk about type 1 and type 2 regions. Those are the ones where you either set up dx dy or dy dx. Well, this is neither of those types. So if you've, you've got to do some fancy footwork to, to get that to work. And so it's, it's really quite complicated to do it that way. So that means that we should be thinking about a change of coordinates here, okay? I'm gonna give you the change of coordinates, all right? But let me just point out that you might, when you, when you find change of coordinates, it's really just kind of a hit or miss kind of thing. You just kind of have to make a guess and see if it works and, and just see how things go and then budge things around until things start to work out okay. But just because I see an X minus Y out front here, I think that's a suggestion that maybe my change of coordinates should be something like u equals x minus y. That's a good bet. And then if I look up here, x squared minus y squared, well, I know that if I multiply x minus y times x plus y, I get x squared minus y squared. So maybe a good other variable would be x plus y, I'll call that v. Because this will become much nicer now. In these new coordinates, this integral becomes, well, x minus y just becomes u. And e to the x squared minus y squared, we said, just becomes u times v. So that change of coordinates uh, makes things pretty nice as far as the integrand goes. But how, how do they affect the region that we're integrating over? Well, hopefully they make that nice too. So let's see what happens. Uh, in these coordinates, u and v. Well, let's look at this. x plus y went from 1 to 3, but x plus y is what I'm calling v. So v goes from 1 to 3. So there's 1, there's v equals 1, there's v equals 3. So these two diagonal lines here became these two horizontal lines here. I'm drawing them dashed until I get the full region, and then I'll shade them in fully. And then um, this is a little bit more complex. This is uh, x squared minus y squared. That's u times v. So we're saying u times v is equal to 1. And here I'm saying u times v is equal to negative 1. Right, well, u times v equals 1 is the same as v equals 1 over u. So that's, that's this... Um, hyperbola looks like this, and then um, u times v equals negative 1 is uh, v equals minus 1 over u. That would, that would uh, yeah, that would be up here like this. So what we have is we have this region in here, which isn't super nice. It's not a rectangle, but it's a heck of a lot nicer than what we started with. 
So in the UV coordinates, this region ain't too bad. And so we're gonna do this integral with respect to these coordinates over here. Okay, so how do we set this all up? Well, we have to find the, what I should really write here in the DA is I should write that this is the DA according to the XY coordinates, this is the DA according, according to the UV coordinates. They're not the same, okay? There's an adjustment that you have to make when you move from this one to this one. Okay, just like in polar coordinates, when we move from dx dy to dr d theta, there's an adjustment. We have to multiply by r. And that's called the Jacobian. So what we have to do is we have to figure out what the Jacobian is in this, in this case. And the Jacobian is given by, if my new variables are u and v, my Jacobian is going to be x u times uh, y v minus x v times y u. And I'm going to take the absolute value of that. That, by the way, that is the, de that is the determinant of the matrix. If you know about determinants and matrices, that's the determinant of the matrix x u, y u, x v, y v. And right, so you can think of this as a determinant, or you can think of it as uh, just remember this formula here. But to get these, we need to compute these derivatives. When I say x u, I mean the u derivative of x. Okay? So I go back up here and I say, well, okay, well, I don't have x in terms of u, so I better solve this for x in terms of u. So we're going to solve these um, for x and y, and then we can take these derivatives, and then we can compute this stuff. Okay? So I got to solve these for x and y. So a lot of times when you have a set of a system of equations like this, you can just add them together and see if that helps you solve it. And sure enough, if I add these two equations together, I get um, u plus v equals, well, the y's cancel, I get 2x. And so that means that uh, x equals u plus v over 2. So there, I solved it for x. But I can also solve these for y, right? If I subtract the first equation from the second equation, so I'm going to take the second equation minus the first, then the x's will cancel. So I'll get v minus u equals 2y. So y equals v minus u over 2. So cool, I got my x and my y, and so now I can compute these derivatives. Okay? So Let's keep doing that on the right-hand side here. I need to compute x u, I need to compute x v, I need to compute y u, and I need to compute y v. I need all these derivatives. Well, the derivative of x with respect to u is just one half. X with respect to v is one half. Y with respect to u is negative one half. And y with respect to v is one half. And so these actually came out pretty nice. They're all constants. They won't always be constants, but in this case they are. But I can plug these in here now. So x, u, y, v. So that's one half times one half. That's one fourth. And then I got x, v, y, u. So that's uh, one half. X, oh, good. Okay, one half times negative one half. I was afraid I was going to get zero here. So I get negative one fourth. All right. One fourth minus negative one fourth is one half. So that's all my Jacobian here is in this case. It's just a constant one half. That's super nice. So what that means is that is the factor that I've got to multiply the old DA by to get the new DA. All right. So what I really have to do, is I'll write my new integral. U times E to the UV times one half and I, and I can put du dv or du v du here. Looking at my region, I think it's much easier to do um, du dv. And the bounds, well, let's go look at the picture. All right, the picture is for every v between one and three, so if I take a v between one and three, U ranges from this line, this curve to this curve. Well, what is this curve here? We said that this was the curve 
this was u times v equals 1. So that means uh, u equals 1 over v. And this curve over here is u times v equals negative 1. So here, u equals minus 1 over v. So I'm going from minus 1 over v to positive 1 over v. Solving those, those curves for u and v. So u goes from minus 1 over v to positive 1 over v. v goes from 1 to 3. And let me just correct something up here. I should have put, when I wrote this down, the Jacobian needs to come into here. So I should have written um, J up here in absolute, we usually put it in absolute values because J is that thing that we computed down below, right? I should have written that in this, this space. Whenever you convert from one set of coordinates to another one, you have to multiply by the Jacobian. And I forgot to write that. And that's what we inserted, right? That was the one half. This is the Jacobian. Okay, doing this integral, so if you use integration by parts, you can get to the final answer. I'm going to run this through Maple just to save time. All right, and let's go, let's go compute the answer in Maple, because I think integration by parts is going to take up a whole, another uh, half a sheet here. Negative 1 over V to 1 over V. This went from 1 to 3. My integral was u times e to the u times v. And we did the integral du dv. And it looks like the answer is 4 thirds e to the negative 1, or in other words, 4 over 3e, because e to the negative 1 is just 1 over e. 4 over 3e is the final answer. Oh, I forgot the 1 half. <laughs> I forgot to put the 1 half in maple. So if I had done that, this would become a 6, right? Okay, cool.